Keith Cowing is joining us now for more on what's in store. And Keith, um, maybe take a step back and, and we can talk a little bit about this last year because each one of these years is kind of a building block in terms of this program uh, with missions, building on missions on top of missions. Give us a sense of what 2023 was like. Well, this is where I think it became clear that there's many different ways to do the same thing. And uh, China and the U.S. and Europe and Japan and India and the United Arab Emirates are all off there doing things, uh, going to the moon, going to Mars and space stations. So to me, it was sort of uh, I, I had something happen the other day. I've been watching space station spacewalks for 30, 40 years. And I was watching something on YouTube and I thought, what, what are those guys? Oh, wait, it's not the International Space Station. It's China's space station. And I thought, oh, that's kind of cool that I'm actually confused which space station <laughs> I'm looking at because there used to be only one. So to me, it's, again, it's the sort of thing where it's becoming more common for more people to be involved in more things in space. Yeah, it's kind of the golden age of space exploration in a sense. Give me an idea of what the space program looks uh, as we enter 2024. There are a number of missions uh, on the slate, right? Yeah, there's... Um, Interestingly enough, uh, the U.S. is finally going back to the moon with two commercial landers. One's going to be leaving in a few weeks and another one shortly thereafter. And by February, hopefully, we'll have several landing there. Uh, then the Japanese are sending one. China's sending another one. And luckily, you know, we, we talk about, you know, international collaboration in space. Recently, it was found, they found a way for NASA scientists to be able to bid to study some of the lunar samples that China brought back. So slowly but surely, maybe a little bit of cooperation is starting to appear once again. You know, uh, Keith, when I think back, you know, I, when I was a kid, uh, it was so exciting. You'd watch it on TV, you know, man on the moon. I mean, it was amazing. Um, we're looking at a possible manned mission by China in 2030. And, and I think about all the people who have been born since the 1970s who've never seen what I saw in my childhood, you know, of, of uh, people walking on the moon. This is going to be remarkable. Can you talk to us about that and, and how significant that's going to be? Yeah, you and me both. I was on TV with somebody the other day, and they were not even, I don't think their parents were alive, but you and I saw that. And for you and I, it's like, oh, great, we're finally going back, where it's good, it's taken long enough uh, for us to go back. But for so many people, somewhere between two, a third to three quarters of the people alive today, they've never seen people walk live in another world. So for them, it's like doing the same thing again for the first time. And like you and I will just be sort of sitting back in a rocking chair saying, oh, I remember when that happened back in 69. But for these folks, it's brand new. And it's brand new for more people than watched it the first time. So to me, just again, more people seeing more aspects of what's going on in space is the most exciting thing of all. Yeah, I took a uh, took my son, who was a teenager at the time, to a documentary about space exploration and the space missions. And uh, afterwards, he said to me, wow, you lived during a really interesting time. At least those kids now are going to be living during an interesting time. Um, what do you make of this, I said, golden age of space exploration? It really is kind of a remarkable time, isn't it? Well, it is. Not, and it, back when we were kids, it was the Russians or America, then the Europeans and then China. But it was always big countries and lots of money and it was geopolitical. Well, now you have companies run by rich people who read too much science fiction. They've got more money than some countries. They don't know anything better than to want to do all the stuff that we grow up talking about to our kids, saying, hey, someday we'll be able to do this. Well, they can do it. So it's, it, and again, you have smaller countries doing things like Nepal has is going to be sending a rock back to the moon. Uh, Nepal is a space power now. They've launched satellites. And this is becoming ubiquitous. So again, it, it's the more people that get involved, and again, Hopefully, it's a way that great nations can work with other great nations to do great things, one of which is to explore. And exploring space is probably the ultimate thing that great nations can do. Yeah, Keith, it's always great talking to you. Uh, exciting. I don't necessarily want to be in a rocking chair when all this is going on, but <laughs> nevertheless, uh, <laughs> great to hear. Thank you so much. My pleasure.